Okay, hello and welcome to msdynamicsworld.com's fall CRM webcast series. I'm Jason Gumpert, and today we are joined by Scott Sewell of Hitachi, of Hitachi Solutions. Scott is a Microsoft MVP for CRM, and he's also a first-time presenter for us, and we're um, are really happy to have him uh, joining us in this uh, individual session. Um, Scott's here today to talk about the uh, XRM Toolbox, uh, an open source uh, tool set for Dynamic CRM that um, has really been gaining a loyal following and a lot of interest from uh, people who want to learn about how to take advantage of it and how to uh, how, how to use the approach. Um, and we, we do invite you to add your feedback and ask questions today during Scott's presentation. You can um, use the Q&A block or the chat that you'll see in the webcast session here. Scott will be taking questions at the end, but, uh, but please do enter yours anytime. So without further delay, um, to start the webcast off, please allow me to uh, welcome Scott. Thank you, Jason. Hope everybody's doing well today. Um, today, I, I'm going to be presenting about the uh, the XRM toolbox. And just to be uh, clear, this is a, a tool that I use every day, but I didn't develop it. It was developed by uh, one of the CRM MVPs, Tanguy Tizard. Uh, out of uh, Paris, France. Uh, he works for, he's a consultant for DaVista, and Tangi has been developing this utility kit set for the last several years. Um, it's my go-to utility. It's, it's hard to imagine implementing CRM without the utility. Um, it's been uh, out in, in the marketplace for, he's had it on CodePlex for several years. Um, and it's not just a single utility, it's kind of a wrapper of a bunch of plug-in utilities that he created for CRM, uh, CRM management and deployment and configuration. The nice thing about the tool, one of the great things about the tool, other than its versatility, is the fact that Tonki has written it so it interacts only through the SDK in portable methods. So it, that makes it vis uh, viable to use either on-premise, online, or IFD, where if you're using partner-hosted, uh, in fact, I use it on all three types of environments regularly. The other part of that is that it's it's only acting through the API, which means it's safe in that it's not hacking anything unusual. All the all the interactions it does with CRM are, uh, you know, like I said, through the SDK and not any kind of um, under the covers. Uh, dark magic that uh, I, I've seen some some types of utilities attempt to do. That means that it's supportable and it's uh, it can be used on, uh, online. Uh, the other piece about the tool is it's constantly evolving. There are new modules being added to it regularly, and so we'll talk about some of those. Some of the utilities within the within the toolbox are probably maybe familiar to you, and uh, some of them may be very new to you. And I'm gonna I want to cover several of those. And, um, and, and include that. But uh, again, I want to give a, a real shout out and, and my, my thanks to Tongi for providing this. It is, he does provide it free. Um, and I do encourage you, he does have a donation site. I've, I've, he's got a tip jar on his page. So I've, I definitely have sent him, um, uh, I would say beer money, but I guess it's since it's in uh, Paris, uh, he, some wine money for, uh, for just the incredible amount of help that he's given to the community. So without any further ado, I'd like to talk through what is the toolbox and how do you use it and what uh, what can be done with it. So how do you use it? The, the first way to do this is to download the toolbox from the XRM toolbox um, page at codeplex.com. And if you're not familiar, familiar with CodePlex, it's a site, um, I believe it's hosted by Microsoft, I believe it's owned by Microsoft, but it's a site of open source type tools for all sorts of uh, products of which there's a handful for Microsoft CRM, Dynamic CRM. So when you when you download it, in fact, let's go ahead and I'm gonna follow this process and uh, show you how I how I get the tool and uh, use it. So let me share my screen. If I can remember how to share my screen. Oh, there it is, share my desktop. And once it shares, so how do we how do we use the utility? So let me let me go ahead and grab the utility. I'm going to go ahead and go to um, uh, the, the CodePlex site where the toolbox is located, and you'll find it here under XRMToolbox.codeplex.com. And if you'll notice, there's 
that's uh, November 4th is the most recent release. He re releases it fairly regularly um, as, as you go. So it's, uh, it's pretty often that you'll see that come out and, and updates be available to it. Uh, as of uh, the most recent version, or the, I think the most recent version, he's added a, a notification to the utility so that it actually alerts you to let you know whether there is a new, um, a, a new version that's out there. Uh, so that's always available. That's that's nice and and available. So let me pop out the chat window here. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and, and download a copy. When you, you download, it will download to, uh, a zip file. Go ahead and save it out to your desktop. This is a, I'll just give you the sort of what I found to be the best practice, and I'll drop it onto my desktop. And once it's on the desktop, I will let me close this out. There's a, a trick to it. If you go to it when you first download it, um, at the moment it's it's currently an unsigned uh, zip file or it's unsigned application. So when you download it, it, it you need to let it let Windows know that it's a it's a, a file that you intentionally downloaded and pulled out. So the first thing I always do is go to properties and choose unblock. Once I hit unblock, that takes care of unblocking all the all the uh, DLLs that are contained within it. Once I've done that, then I'm going to export it, extract all that to a folder on my desktop called XRM Toolbox, um, which I already have in place. Uh, so I'll just, uh, 33 files there, I'll replace those. Now I've got the whole XRM Toolbox uh, downloaded and, and available to me. Within it, you're going to find one, one application called XRM Toolbox, not surprisingly, called uh, in the application. Also, there's a configuration file uh, that holds the the connections to the different environments you connect to. Let's go ahead and fire up the XRM toolbox, and usually I'll stick a uh, I'll pin it to my taskbar. So I've got it already pinned to my taskbar. So I'll just show you how I, I normally do it. Click on it, open it up, and uh, you'll you'll notice it loads up with a, a list of utilities that are are contained within it. I think there's 20 some odd utilities in the in the toolbox at the moment. And because I've chosen, there's an option here that says uh, display the most used f uh, first. You can, and I chose to use the small icons. The number of times I use this particular utility in this environment, it ranks it the, so that the most commonly used ones are up at the top, which is the way I typically do that. But down in the lower left hand corner, there's a thing called, it says not connected. This is the connectivity that you establish. And you've noticed I've already created and saved two connections. But if I was going to create a, a, another connection, I would just click Create New. And uh, let's just say I'm going to create one to default. That's my uh, organization on, on premise that I'm using in this environment. So I'm going to create one called Default. And this one is on premise. And all in, in my case, all I have to do is type in CRM213 which is the server name that I'm on. Let me show you where I am. See, there it is right there, Serum 2013. So I can go to that and I'm gonna use an integrated authentication. I'll save it and click Get Orgs. And if I do that, it will go out and check which organizations I have on premise uh, at that server name, uh, the server name 2013. In my case, uh, I want to connect to the default organization, the one named default. Click OK, and I can now save it and, and connect. So it'll go down here, and now at the lower half, it'll say connecting to CRM 2013 default. The nice thing is it saves it in your list, and so if you've worked with a, a lot, if you're a, uh, a customer, uh, excuse me, if you're a, um, a provider and you work with a lot of different customers, uh, you work with a lot of different organizations uh, 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 within the within an environment like uh, test, dev, QA, prod. You can create a separate um, connection to each of those, save it, and then it stores the stores the URL and everything, uh, stores your authentication, so you can just jump to that environment. So by without doing it, I do, I'll just do say I want to connect to this environment. Once I do that, you'll see it tests the connection and moves over, and once it's connected to that environment, uh, give it just a second, it will connect, and um, now it's good. 
So we're all good. So we've connected to that, that environment. So having said that, there are a number of things. Let's go back and look at the, um, at the presentation. So I wanted to walk through a number of uh, options that we have available to us. I'll look here. Um, I'm basically set up a challenge, uh, a challenge for myself. So in my, in my test environment, I created a, a real simple postal code solution. But I wanted to put some polish on it and deploy it uh, along with uh, data to, the, to my production environment. The, this is really a way I can show you how I can use the pieces of, of the XRM toolkit toolbox to clean up my solution and make it friendly and look good for uh, del delivering to the, to the user. Um, we, I'll show you how I use the icons, uh, how I clean up the JavaScript, uh, and then make the views consistent and be ready to, to move it off to production. We'll also take a look at some of the other utilities along the way to make sure that they're, uh, we have a comfortable and, and visible how that, how that we can use those. So let me go back to my desktop and uh, share my monitor. So now that we've got our, our um, environment out in place, we can then look and see what are the tools that we have available to us. Uh, let me close this one. So the most common utility that I use uh, is the web resources man web resource manager, but some of the other favorites are the site site map access role. Uh, but let's take a look and see if I was going to take an environment like this one and um, and and work on this. What would I actually do with it? One of the first things I'd probably show you is the uh, view layout replicator. This has got to be one of the most popular tool that's, tools that's out there. Uh, in fact, I was on site with Tangi in, in, at, uh, in Seattle last week, and he, he mentioned that this is probably the number one, number one tool, and the second one is probably the sitemap editor. But let's take a look at those two first. One of my pet peeves of uh, in implementations is if I look at an environment like this one, and I go up to the quick find and type in, um, let's say I type in uh, a space. And if you notice when I, my search results came back, I came back with a lot of different, uh, I mean, different columns. Let me actually repeat that. So I've got my account name, main phone, address, primary contact, email. But if I just typed in something in this search for, uh, then my search results change. Uh, also, if I have my active uh, accounts I follow, that's one view. If I do accounts being followed, that's a different view. Um, go to active accounts is another view. If you if you've ever implemented an environment and you added you cleaned up the layout of one view and said, okay, I've got all the columns laid out exactly the the size and width that I want. Uh, they're in the right sequence. Uh, it just looks good. It kind of fits the data. Now I've got to go do that to every view, uh, to all my other views in the system. I want to make them at least partially consistent. Now I don't want I don't I want a different query on those, but I at least want the views to be consistent between them. Well, in the old days before the XRM toolkit, one of the the hard way to do it is you have to go in and um, look at system views. And you know, go to each view that you're on, look at that one. So there's your layout of the main view, and then I'd have to go down to uh, Quick Find, and that view is different. So I need to expand that. You know, just just going through all the details and save it, uh, add all the fields that I need, save, close, and publish it. However, with the toolkit, one of the, the one of the the view layout replicator utility, which is here. I can click on that, load the entities in the environment, okay, and let's say I want to go to the account entity. I'm interested in the account entity. So on the account entity, I want to take what's the, the layout of the active accounts, which is this one. I want that, uh, that layout to be applied to my quick find. Let me go down to quick find. There's quick find. And all you have to do is take this one, choose what you want it to be what you want it to be applied to, 
and then save the view and publish the entity. And by doing that, it takes the column and uh, the column width and layout of that active account view, the one that I've selected up the top, and applies it to one, two, or all of the views down below, uh, and makes those the, the default, makes those match the layout of the account view. Incredibly, an incredible time saver. Uh, one caveat that I'd like to point out is when you get to the look account lookup, this one, this one has some special characteristics, and the account lookup always wants to have the name of the entity, the name field, to be the first column. So usually I, I, I handle the name, the, the account lookup view, or the lookup view on any entity. I handle those separately, and I handle those manually. So just as a, a FYI, uh, you don't want to uh, make the mistake of having a, a, a different view uh, excuse me, uh, uh, something other than the name column be the first one in that one. Anyway, once I've done that, I saved it, I published it all, I can minimize that, and if I refresh my desktop, or refresh my environment, now when I do a quick find, I think, let's see if I, if I published it. Yeah, so now when I do a quick find, you notice that the columns remain the same as, as in my uh, default view which I think makes for a better experience for the end user. Anyway, that's the view layout replicator, or just a really a, a nice tool to, to add that fit and finish to your environment. The other thing, I wanted, one of the other pieces I'd like to show you is what's called the sitemap editor. Again, this is probably the, the second most commonly used tool that's out there. Um, if you've ever tried to edit the sitemap in CRM, uh, you really have to export an XML file, edit it manually, then re-import that file uh, as part of a solution to get it back in and make it uh, visible within this environment. The sitemap editor takes care of all the, the grunt work there and allows you to focus on organizing your site the way you'd like to see it handled. So here's, this, here's the sitemap. Um, if I click on this, and you notice I'm staying logged into this environment, I can click on the sitemap editor and then click load sitemap. First thing I'll see is the sitemap and then the areas in the sitemap. If you'll notice, those align with the areas that I have in my site. So let me let me get this so you can see both of them at the same time. Hopefully I can do that. So, all right, so you'll notice I've got SFA, which uh, stands for sales, the sales area, and then I've got my settings area. And in my settings, I've got my the different pieces that are there, and sales I'm cleaned up, so I just have the items that are on the environment. But if I look down here, you can see uh, sales and settings, and then if I go into sales, I've got my areas and the, the, the activity, excuse me, the entities below that that are, that are located. So what I'd like to do is in my settings area, I've got a new entity that I want to, uh, to make available to this area called the postal code. Uh, one way to do that is to, to just add it through the, uh, uh, the configuration, and it will drop it into the extensions field. But maybe I want that to be visible uh, up near the, the business settings area. So what I'll do is I'll go into my business settings, right-click and say I want to add a sub-area, and it will assign a temp ID. I'm just going to call this one uh, uh, nav postal codes. This is a custom entity that I created, um, make it available for all the clients. And I'll choose the entity out of the list of entities that are there. So grab my postal codes entity, custom entity. So there it is, the HS postal code. And you know, I can use all the, the choices to say this is only available on the Outlook client or only available on the web. Um, or, you know, and there's a, several uh, other pieces about that that I can do. I can choose a the default icon for it, uh, but in this case, I'm going to just hit save. Once I've saved it, uh, I'll, all I do is hit update sitemap at the top. And by updating the sitemap, I've added it to the business settings area. So now, come back in here and go to business, uh, go to settings, business settings. There's nothing there. It's not there yet, but if I refresh it, 
settings. Now I've got the postal code. Um, and I can go to that entity right away. The nice thing is this allows you to organize uh, additional areas, uh, additional pieces within the, uh, like sub areas within the group uh, and make those available. One of the things I noticed er, just a moment ago is if I go to sales, pull this down, there's an area called unknown 14. That tends to, that's the, that becomes a, a visible when, uh, particularly in an upgraded environment, you'll see these groupings called unknown something. That's just because there's not a label associated with it. What I'll do for to, to associate a label with that is go into Salesforce, excuse me, the Salesforce automation area, and I want to add a title to that grouping. So if I click on group and add titles, uh, because I'm in, working in English, I'll do 1033, that's the, the English language code, and I'll put, uh, sales objects, and save that. And you'll notice it adds, adds a title uh, area and then a title for with the 1033 language code. And I can save that and update the sitemap. Once I update the sitemap, hit refresh on that. And yep, now, the, now that, uh, that grouping has a name. You'll see this uh, becoming very important uh, this year and also in the, in the coming year with some improvements we're seeing coming down the line, that uh, that grouping will be a very nice thing to have in place. Uh, and so as you, as you go along, you can take care of that. But that's the sitemap editor. It's an incredibly powerful, um, and you can take it, and you can also um, save it out as an XML file, and you can see what that looks like. You can also edit, open a, an existing sitemap, move it to a new environment, however you need to do it, but it's a, a very powerful uh, weapon in your, your arsenal here. Let's take a look at some other pieces of the utility that are uh, I use it a ton. If you'll notice by, in this environment, the one I use the most is the Web Resources Manager. If you've ever needed to edit a web resource, like in fact, in my uh, configuration, let me show you what my, this little utility looks like. If I go into this and edit my, I'm gonna customize the entity. And within the entity, I have, uh, let's see, where's my web resources? Let's say I've got a web resource for a JavaScript, uh, JavaScript file called Postal Code. And if you've ever gone in and tried to edit the JavaScript here or JScript in this, uh, this window, you get these little, you know, it's, it's difficult at best, and you can make all your edits and maybe copying, pasting it back and forth to um, uh, Sub Sublime or, uh, or Notepad++, back and forth. There's an actual easier way to deal with this, and that's to use the web resources utility built into the XRM tool Toolkit Toolbox. So what I'll do is click on the Web Resources Manager, and I can either load all the web resources in the environment, or I can pick them out of a specific solution. In this case, I just want to grab it out of my, my postal code environment, uh, my postal code utility. So I click on the postal code validator, click OK. I can load all the types of web resources that might be involved, or I can unselect it and choose, I just want the JScript files, uh, which is one, an easy way to do it. In fact, this one's a small uh, solution, so I'll just grab everything, and you can see what it looks like. Now we're seeing the uh, HS, which is the grouping of the, the prefix of my uh, web resource solution, and then under that I've got postal code, and I've got a postal code JScript file that I wanted to look at. This JScript file is really nice because it allows you to edit and update the record. If I needed to make a, a change or add some, add some comments to it, um, I can do that right in the editor window, and you'll notice that the uh, the name of it changes to red, meaning that there were ch some, say, some changes that were made here that haven't been pushed up to the server yet. I can make all these changes that I need to make my edits, uh, you know, if I needed to. Um, I needed to add, you know, debugger code, file, save it, then update and publish it. Now all that's pu pushed back up to the server and it's, it's published as the web resource for that form. Um, 
The other thing that has been added very recently um, is a JScript beautifier, which if you notice, you know, I'm, I'm kind of uptight sometimes. Some of my code comes out looking pretty awful looking uh, when it's paste, copied and pasted out of another environment. You get all these uh, funny uh, ways in which things have been, you know, the, all the columns don't line up. It's just a little hard to read. Uh, what you can do is use the beautify, and that takes the JScript that's in the file and just lines things up and organizes it uh, just in terms of visually formatting it. Uh, it's not really changing any of your code, it's just changing it so that it, li it uh, is visually easier to do. You can do it, paste it out to JS Beautifier or some other, other website, but this is just built in so it makes it nice and easy to read. Um, and then once you've done that, you can, of course, save it and then update and publish it, push it out to the, to the CRM site. One other item to note is if you get into a file that's very, very large, and you needed to compress it to try to make, if, you, if you're pushing a huge JScript file out to, the, to your uh, clients, you might want to minimize the amount of space that's being used in that, um, that JScript file just to make it faster to transfer. Uh, this really is only pl applicable to very large uh, scripts or very, very large files, but you can use the compress utility and the compress if you'll notice, it gives you a little bit of a learn. It will, it doesn't obfuscate, but it just squeezes it all in and makes it one big, uh, one big blob without, uh, without the visual separators that you, you see otherwise. It cuts out some space and it makes it a little, a little faster to, to push across the connection. Um, if you ever need it, if, and it also removes all the comments from the file. So you can undo it by clicking Beautify, but you notice that the comments have been removed from our code. So um, that's just a, another tool. Another tool that's available. It's especially um, helpful for you know libraries and things like that that are useful. If you'll notice, I'm not going to save that. I'll just click off of it and go back to it. And I haven't saved it, so my comments are back. I'm at, back invisible. Uh, same thing for the like the JSON library. There's a JSON library that's commonly used. It's quite big and lots of lots of uh, comments through it. Uh, you can compress that and make that uh, very small very quickly. Yep. So, quick uh, quick way to do that, and then you can beautify it and see it in slant streamline. But I'm not going to save that. I'm going to uh, clean it up. The other thing that's very nice is if I needed to add a new uh, a new web resource there, I can click script and type a name of the um, let's say postal code extras and click OK. And the nice it's it's adding that, and I can then you know make my change, uh, make my updates here. File, save it, and then publish it, and it goes up to uh, up to the environment as part of the solution. The other piece, one of the other items that you that's very helpful, is if I uh, I was working with a, a consultant the other day, and we needed to do a quick look through all the code that was out there in this in this uh, in an environment that had lots and lots of JavaScript in the environment. You can take this whole environment, click uh, on the plus sign on the check mark. And save everything to a disk uh, to the disk. Uh, and if I save it out to the disk, I'm going to create a new folder called uh, Post. And click OK. And it will take that take that whole solution. And if you'll notice, I now have uh, a folder here on my desktop called Postal, and it groups it based on the the folder and there's my JSON, JSON file and then within the postal code, I've got the the images and the JScript files, uh, and that's that's nice for if you need to make a um, a backup um, and may or maybe push it out to TFS or something like that. Um, so here is the um, so the other piece one of the other items that I'd like to to show out of that tool 
is um, what else do I need to do? New root tools, uh, find web resources without dependency. This one is interesting in that you can pull a um, look at all the files in your in your solution and find out if any of those have do not have any visible dependencies to CRM. For instance, you know, I just created this little postal code extras, the JS file, and it's not being used by anything in the environment. This post, this web resource is without dependency. We'll go out and say, hey, you've got a web resource, but nothing in CRM references this, this directly. Um, and maybe it's something that was added on the fly or maybe no, no longer needed. And so you can remove that. Uh, you can select it and delete it. Now, one thing I would be uh, leery of is go ahead and make sure you have a backup because CRM may not reference it, but kind of an old style way of doing it uh, would be, wait, did I do it? Wanna, wanna delete the, yeah, close. Let me delete that one. Yep, okay. So one of the old styles would be to reference a web resource um, uh, from from within another web resource or like a JScript calls another JScript, it wouldn't note that dependency, but uh, if the file is registered on any, any environment, it would pick that up. So uh, very nice tool to have in your arsenal there. So let's take a look at uh, some other utilities that are in the place. Um, so we talked about the web resources and the site map. One of the other items that was added very recently um, is the metadata, dot, well, this is one of the original items, is a metadata document generator. I use this a ton when I'm taking an environment and pushing out, pushing it out to um, uh, to uh, to uh, new environments, uh, pushing it out and making it available to um, you know trying to document it for the users. What I can do is click Retrieve Entities and Language, and I want to say I'm going to document my postal code utility that I created. And so I'm just going to go into postal code up there, and I'm going to create an environment um, called a schema. So I'm going to create an Excel workbook called postal code schema, save it, and in my, my generate, I want to generate just for the postal code schema, postal code, there it is. And I can choose to say, you know, I want to see, uh, I want the attributes that are on the form. I want to see um, the, uh, where's my field? I want the attribute location in the form. That's what I want. And I think that's everything. That's all I want to do. Click the generate. What it will do is spin up a Excel file with all the fields that are on your entity, and let me go ahead and insert that as a, oops, go back to format that as a table. And make the columns nice and pretty. You can see it. A couple of, a couple of little formatting things that you sometimes want to do ahead of time. And there it is. All right, so now I've got a, uh, uh, the ability to uh, go through my environment. I can see all the field, the custom fields that are in there, as well as on the custom fields, I can see information about where they are on the form in the tab, uh, tab and section within the form. I can also see fields, the field links. If I'm doing mappings to an integration, I can see the field links. Uh, if there are pick option sets. You can see the option set values here over on the right. You can see that the, there are two status codes, and active and inactive. You can pull those. Uh, in the additional data column as well, you can see uh, any currency fields or time zones. You can see the, the maximum and minimum values. Just an incredible resource, along with, of course, the, uh, the display name and the description that's used that you entered in the, in the schema. Um, so, uh, and um, so that's that's uh, incredibly useful for, particularly for when you are doing uh, integration work. A uh, couple of questions that popped through, I, I noticed that came through. 
uh, and we'll we'll cover we'll talk about those. One of them, I think, maybe I maybe you missed the first part of the conversation, but uh, what was the cost of this? This thing is free. It's completely free. There's no there's no charge for it. However, there is a donate button if you'd like. If you if you find that it's saved you time and money, you can go to Tongi. And this is not me, but this is going to Tongi, um, and you can donate to his site um, through his site, and will allow you to to tip, you know basically a tip jar for Tongi to let you know let him know that uh, you appreciated the use of his tool. Um, is the toolkit. I've tipped him several times and uh, made sure that, but just because uh, I get so much value out of using this. But uh, again, that's um, I promote it just because that's that's I believe in in uh, supporting those who've helped out and help the community out. The other piece that I mentioned at the beginning is how to connect to an environment. If you needed to connect to an environment, uh, basically it's just you create the new connection and give it. Which type of environment, whether you're using, if you're using Office 365, uh, depending on which which region you're in, you would choose that, and then your username and log your login and password, and that will allow you to select which which environment you would connect to. If you're connecting to on-premise, you can choose uh, to either not to use SSL or not, and you put in your user your server name basically how to connect to that. So I think that should answer those two questions. Uh, if you have further questions on that, take a look at the beginning of the, uh, the, the presentation. We can you see a little bit more of that. So let's take a look at some other utilities that are in the in the tool that are incredibly helpful to me. One of them is what uh, is the bulk at, at, attribute bulk attributes updater, um, and this one is very helpful in that if I go into um, an environment like uh, a default environment, let's see if I've already set it on this one. If I go to advanced find and do an advanced find on contacts, I go to contacts and advanced find and, ooh, I've already cleaned this one up. So let me use a different one. Maybe we'll do, we'll try accounts and see if I already cleaned this one up. Um, let's see, accounts, whoops, there it is. We clean that one up too. So let me find leads. I'm just trying to look for one that I've already haven't already cleaned up. Oh, okay, there, there's a good one. So if I look at uh, an, uh, an entity in CRM and, and uh, contacts is probably the most notorious of this, and you go to the environment and you go to that that uh, entity and you look and you'll see tons and tons of attributes that you're not using in your environment. Maybe you are using all the address ones. Or maybe you're using all the address twos, telephone zips, UPS codes. Uh, most users do not need all of those. Most environments don't use all of those fields. However, the first thing your user sees is they see this incredibly long list of all the attributes that are on that. And they have to go hunt and peck, hunt all the way through this long list of attributes to find what they're interested in. What we, what I tend to do uh, is use the the view layout from the um, attribute bulk updater and choose um, choose the entity that I'm interested in. In this case, it's the lead entity. And I could just choose to check the attributes that are on the form. And, and that will set all the attributes that are on the form. Uh, let me look and see if I have anything else that I want to choose. So I've got my address one, that's the composite. And I've got annual review, city, company, uh, currency, bulk, the do not allow. I've got a handful of fields that I'm interested in, but most of the fields, if you notice, most of the fields are blank because we're not using those in this particular environment. What I can do is click this valid for advanced find. And save that. And let's see. Oh, sorry, maybe I should check that for I check that first. If you'll notice, a lot of them are selected, but I can either unselect them individually, or I can say just give me the ones that are that are actually on the form. Then save the attributes, and it will go out and it will update all of these attributes and remove the 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 uh, 
property called um, uh, valid for advance find. By doing that, once I've done that, that takes it, and I can publish the entity. And once I come back into advanced find the next time, and let me just hit refresh to make sure I've reload the form. Go to advanced find. And let's say we're going to go back to our leads entity because that's one I was testing with. Now, if you'll notice, there's just an address. All those address two values are gone, and it's just the fields that are actually on the form. Those those have become the ones that are visible. Um, it's an incredibly nice way to clean up a lot of stuff that's visible by default, and make the advanced find much more focused on what you want it to look like. Um, I will say, be careful. Uh, you, sometimes we have fields that are not on the form, but are used by workflow or are used by the SDK or, or are used in queries. You want to make sure that you don't remove anything that you are using, even if it's in the, even if you're not using it on the form. Um, because by taking it off advanced find, it actually takes it out of uh, play for creating um, uh, charts or views or sometimes even workflow. Uh, doesn't show up in that. So be, be, be reasonable about it, but it does get you a very quick way to clean up your environment uh, and make it easier for your end users to go find the, the values that they're looking for. Okay, so let me close this one out and look at a, a couple other utilities that we have in our, in our toolkit here. Some other utilities that we have, let me close that one out, um, is the uh, role updater. This one has been very helpful to me recently as I was rolling out this, uh, this postal code. And in this case, I needed to go out and find a bunch of users, and, excuse me, all, the, all the, the, the roles that are in the system. I needed to go out and make sure that they all could have read access to this new, uh, this new entity that I created. Now, if I'm going to do that through CRM, I'd go into um, – uh, administration, security roles, go into each, each security role, go to custom entities and click the read access on the postal code and close that out. So you have to go through every entity and, and do all the, the, uh, the clicking on the, each of those, those uh, security roles. But with the, the uh, role updater, I can actually select all the roles that I want to update I'm going to take out administrator and customizer because those are, in fact, in my client, take out a, a, a activity feed, take out those. Those are the ones I want to update. So I want to click Next. So the, I'm selecting five different roles. Click Next. And then I search for the property that I'm interested or the, the entity that I'm interested in, HS Postal Code. That's the one I'm looking for. And I want all of these roles to have the organization read privilege. That's like giving them the group, big green dot. Uh, click that and hit next. All I'm doing is you see it, it'll cycle through the salesperson, salesperson minimum, support user. I'll probably have um, temp. And then let me back out of that. But there's, it will cycle through all of those environments. Uh, excuse me, all those roles and add the privilege to it. Conversely, I can also go back and let's say that I want to uh, do these users and next and HS. And I want to, to make sure that they have no delete privileges on that. This is a, a very nice way to go out and make sure that you've removed a privilege from a bunch of users and click uh, next. And it'll reset all those. Uh, now that now those users have the privilege, they do have the organization privilege to read, but they don't have any privileges around the, the um, delete the delete entity. Um, very nice way of, of getting all that taken care of and rolled out there to a lot of users. Uh, the script finder is very helpful. If you needed to go out and say, show me all the scripts that are in the environment, uh, it will go out and look at all the entities 
if you have a lot of entities or have a lot of scripts, it will take a lot of time, but it tells you what entities have, uh, so let me go to my account. So I've got on my account, I've got uh, on the ch on change of address one and address one zip code, I am firing on both forms. I am firing this a uh, this method that's in this file. Just a real nice way of going out and finding where all your JavaScript has has been registered throughout the environment. And then you can blow it out to Excel, and you'll know what uh, what all is in the environment. Just a fast way to go and get that. Uh, another item that I find is to be incredibly helpful is the um, let me close out. Go out and choose the um, uh, fetch XML tester. That's helpful. If the user settings utility is helpful in that I can go out and say uh, load the users and I want to select everybody except for the admin account. And I want to make sure that their default pane is Salesforce automation, and I want them to go to um, accounts or activities. We'll put them to activities as their default. I want to make sure that they all have a records per page default of 100. And because all these users I know are in my time zone, I can set them all to Eastern time zone. Now, if I had different users in other other areas, I could you know, set them to their correct, um, their correct time zone and set their default currency to US dollar for this, this environment. There's a few other items I can do and push that out and that takes care of all the, that setting on each of those users. It's a very nice utility because otherwise the only way to do that is to go to each user's desktop and log in as them and set them up with that default, uh, that, that, uh, that change. In fact, I like going, making sure everybody has a detailed mode on advanced find. That's helpful. Um, one of the other, uh, let's take a look at another utility that's out there. So that's a, that's a nice utility. We can go here and look at the, um, the fetch XML tester. If you type, if you work in that fetch, you can take um, a fetch that's out there. In fact, uh, somebody Post it a little bit to me. Copy that and drop it in here and see if I can test it. And I can use this fetch and execute it, and I can get a response back to verify that the fetch XML is correct. I can also format it and make it nice and easy to read. That's a nice way of, especially if you're writing fetch reports, you can see what the, the fetch looks like, push it against your production environment, see what kind of results you get back from it. That's the Fetch XML tester that's part of the toolkit. Uh, I want to move down to another utility that was very we added very recently. I say we added because it was my it was a suggestion I made uh, that Tongi implemented, uh, which was incredible. Well, this one's new. This one's a new one. This one only came out in the last iteration. Load entities, and we can pull that and say uh, I'm interested in the the metadata browser. Say I'm interested in the account, and for the account, I want to see what are the attributes about, excuse me, what are the uh, characteristics of the account entity? What are the attributes on the entity? What kind of relationships does the account have to other entities? Both one-to-many, many-to-one, many-to-many, and what are the privileges for that, uh, the names of the privileges? Now, it's not editable, however, it will, this is very helpful to, um, to, for troubleshooting and also for just documenting and understanding what you're what you're working on. Uh, so, for instance, with a schema name, I've got an account category code, and then I've got the pick list value uh, associated with it. And if I look at that uh, attribute, you can see what all is associated with it. Very nice little metadata browser. Again, it's not editable, but it does allow you to, to view the things that are in the utility. Uh, another piece. Here it is, the sync filter manager. This is one that was added very recently uh, based on a need that I, a uh, suggestion I had, which was I wanted to push out custom filters to all my users so that they would have um, custom sync filters to Outlook, because we wanted to make sure that they didn't sync to Outlook anything older than a 
an appointment older than this year because we imported like um, 250,000 old appointments from a previous system, pushed them in there, and they wanted those in CRM, but they didn't want them out to uh, out to their end users. Another way might be if I wanted a custom filter on accounts where I say, I want to make sure that everybody gets synced Outlook contacts that they follow or contacts associated with uh, it, of it attributes, excuse me, of um, accounts that they follow. I can take, I can create a custom query and then within that custom query, uh, let me use load the, there it is. Use the Scott and then user. Okay, uh, I don't have any fill custom ones, but let me take a load the system views, and I can take a uh, maybe do contacts. Scroll down to my contacts here, and there's my contacts. Contacts I follow. I can take this view and create a synchronization filter based on this uh, based on this view and create a system-wide synchronization filter, meaning that for all contacts that I follow, all users will now get that synchronization filter. Uh, it's very helpful. It's just a, a nice way to deploy that, especially if you've got a lot of users. The only other way to do it is to teach users to go into Outlook Click on the um, uh, click on the, the CRM thing inside of Outlook. Go to their uh, filters and their offline filters and clean that up. Typically beyond what your you know the the bulk of the users are are comfortable with. Uh, this is a way you can create that and publish it and push it out to uh, all users or specific users. You can push it out to individuals. Um, you can also reset their their synchronization filters to whatever they happen to be, whatever their current usage is. Uh, maybe back to the default, if they've hosed around with it and you just need to reset them, you can use this to push out a reset to that user and they can now uh, take, a, take a look at that. So I'm gonna close that, but uh, again, that's a, a very helpful one that's in place. Uh, metadata, the Iconator, if I wanted to, if I had a custom entity that was out there and I wanted to, for instance, in this case, my postal code, uh, I've already got the icons on there, but let me reset them. So that goes back to the default in the the default icons. Uh, if I wanted to use the uh, use an icon that I already have in the environment, like this one, uh, I can map the 16 by 16 version to it. Go to the 32 by 32, map that one. That means I'm taking this, and let me do that. Apply and publish it. It's just a, a quick way of applying uh, uh, icons to different entities that are out in the system and allows you to pull those in. You can also uh, add images by clicking on the add image and click out to your desktop and go into your, your folder. Here's where I actually exported those. Grab those icons, and, uh, but I'm not gonna create them at the moment, but you know, that's the way you, would, you could pull those in and then apply them to uh, a lot of users at the same time. Very good, so, um, let me see if there's, there's so much in here, there's no way to get it all in there. Oh, user role manager, this one's really cool. This one's new, uh, another new one that's out there. What I can do is take a look and say, you know what, I wanna make sure that everybody has this minimum privileges role, um, support minimum, salesperson minimum. I wanna make sure that, you know, I'm gonna filter it by, uh, let's see if I can filter it by, well, I'll just do it by this this group. I want David, Nancy, Chris, Jim, Leroy, and Lori. I wanna make sure, and oh, maybe, don't forget Terry up here. Oops. Click those. I wanna make sure all of these users have at least this particular role. I can click on that. Uh, say I want the salesperson minimum. I can also choose additional roles, but uh, let's go ahead and make sure we have both of these. I can choose to add the role to the existing user. That means that whatever roles they have, 
This will also make sure they also have the roles that I've selected. Or I can choose roles on the left and say, make sure you remove this role from anybody that happens to have it. Or the final one is just um, remove what they have and add back these roles. That just means that you ensure that they conform to the choice that you've made for what users they have. I did this recently, uh, not too long ago, with a uh, about 1,400 users. When we moved them from one business unit to another, we would have had to go through every user and click, you know, uh, 1,400 times and click add the, the roles that they need, make sure we, you know, by moving them into a new business unit, it removes all their roles. But this is a quick way of doing that, and it takes care of pushing that out to all those users at the same time. So let me go ahead and remove existing and then add the, uh, the selected roles to those users. So, you know, in just seconds, you've, you've implemented that. Again, just an incredible time saver. I think I'm actually running out of time here, but I would encourage you to take a look at some of the other items that are in the list. Um, there's uh, other ones that are out there that have, other people have added to the utility and have uh, worked with uh, Tongi to deploy. Um, just an incredible set of, uh, set of utilities that, again, Tongi makes available for free. If you go to his website, to Dynamic CRM Tools, uh, excuse me, it's uh, mscrmtools.blogspot.com, you can see updates of the changes that Tongi releases. Uh, you can see um, you know, there's a picture of us in Seattle uh, last last week at the Microsoft product uh, product uh, headquarters for CRM. But you can see new new choices that are coming out uh, in the in the tool. You can also see um, uh, a list of all the all the plugins that are out there, as well as a little bit of information about each one. You see a list of people who have chosen to sponsor, uh, who are, I mean, here's how you can sponsor, and you can also see a list of, of uh, people who have chosen to, sign, to sponsor. Here's my name, let's be sure. Almost say, say I, I practice what I preach there. Um, but that's a, a way of, of sponsoring and just telling him uh, thank you for providing this to the, to the team. Because he does it for free and, uh, and it's, a, it's a tremendous asset to everyone that's out there. Having said that, I think I'm, I'm going to stop sharing here and give you, my con give you the contact information from both teams. Uh, this is the, the superhero utility. I'll tell you what, I've got, um, I've got a whole set of presentation there, but if you wanted to download it, I think, uh, Jason, is there a way they can download that? Either yeah, we can make uh, the we can make the slides available from yep. um, from our site. We can send out an email with a link to them. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can probably do either of those things and work with you on that after we get there out here. Go. And uh, so yeah. there is the there's the the contact information for Tonki, uh, the author of the tool, and my contact information. And uh, just on my behalf, I just really I want to say thank you to Tonki for providing this. Uh, it's a tremendous tool, and he does a great job with it uh, every time. So uh, um, having said that, Jason, anything else? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, we uh, we do have some questions that have come in, Scott, and I also want to mention, mm -hmm. um, it looks like um, Tongi was actually able to uh, jump on the call here, and he might actually be in as a panelist to help answer a few questions. Um, Tongi? Let me, just, let me just test that out here. Hey, Hi, uh, Tongi, are you hey, there? Hey, Tongi. How are you? <laughs> Fine, thank you. So, uh, did I do okay? Did I tell? Did I did I explain it right? Yeah, great presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tagi, thank you very much for providing this. So you've done a great job with it. It's a, uh, it's something I can't, you know, I use every single day that I'm I'm working on a project. So, uh, it's a tremendous tool, and uh, you've just done a great job of continuing to keep it up to date and making it, uh, you know, the the single can't live without tool that's out there, and then to, and then on top of that, to provide it, making it free to everybody, uh, just a, a tremendous uh, asset you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, we we have a few questions that come in. I know people are starting to drop off because we're at the top of the hour. Uh, uh -huh. When you do leave, please look for the survey um, that you'll see pop up as you leave. We we definitely appreciate uh, that feedback as Scott mentioned on a slide there. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see if we can get to a couple questions here. Um, 
so let's see. Um, so one of the uh, follow up on the connection information that you that you talked mm -hmm. about earlier, Scott. Um, Jeff asks, I assume using IFD if it's on premise, um, but what if you're well? But um, yes, but if you're if, even if outside, you're yeah, if you're outside, uh, Jeff, if you're coming going through IFD outside, you absolutely can. You just put in the uh, the URL to the uh, server. Um, and you'll have no problem with it. You don't need to put the HTTPS in front of it. Just put the URL, the, the um, domain name, and, and um, portion for a, a server. And yeah, just, you can connect just, to uh, it. just the precision, uh, the discovery service must be published on the Internet. Yes. Oh, yeah. Make sure it's, work, it's working. Yeah. Okay. I know some companies do, do, do not publish discovery service outside, but uh, it has to be done for, for example. But. Very good. Uh, another question here. Um, I'm actually not sure which of the tools this relates to, uh, but but Allison asked. I assume that the check attributes on forms is not dynamic. In other words, if you add something to a form, you'd have to go back and add it for the advanced find. Um, is that enough? Correct. For you, guys? you if you would re refresh the check attributes, you will you'll find it. Um, so if, I assume check attributes on form isn't dynamic. If you add something to the form. Yeah, you, that's correct. You just, um, if you added a new field to the entity or added something to the form, just go back into the utility and, and reload it and you can um, make your changes. But yeah, you're, you're right, Allison. It's not uh, a dynamic thing that you just set that and it always keeps it up to date. You're correct. Um, here's a couple of related uh points, one's more of a comment that Tim says his, his partner installed XRM Toolbox four years ago and he hasn't used it, and then um, <laughs> someone else asks, is there, and you can't believe he hasn't used it, not seeing what it does, and then someone else asks, is there, a, is there an update or do we have to uh, download and update it manually? Yeah, is, if you, updater? is there an updater? Right, there is an updater. Uh, just grab the most recent copy uh, from CodePlex at any time, and Tongi, you've got a uh, a alert that says there is a new version that's out there, right? You publish a new version. Yes, yes there is no an integrated version checker that will find mm -hmm. uh, the new version for you. So if you load the XM toolbox and there is a new version, you will have a pop-up uh, that indicates so. And you can click on the button just to go to the download page. There is no automatic update, but you can download the, the latest copy. <laughs> Very good. All right. Um, do you have more details on removing lots of users um, or uh, regarding moving lots of users to a, a new business unit? Um, yeah, you can just copy the users over. You can relocate them and then use the user, the role management tool to push out the um, uh, the roles that you want those users to have, uh, like I mentioned. Uh, but yeah, once you move them from one d business unit to another, it will remove all of their all their roles. So it's one thing to be aware of. All right, let's see here. Um, a lot of great feedback. Thank you. I'm looking for other questions here. Are there any tools which deal with transferring data between CRM and other data sources? There actually is. It's not part of the to the the toolkit, but it's part of the. Uh, SDK and it's a it's a tool that's available. Um, I can't think of the name of it. I know where it is, but was it the? Uh, let me go into the SDK. It's under Tools, the Configuration Migration Utility. There's one called the Data Migration Utility. That's in the S the, the uh, CRM SDK. I think it's only in the last version or two that was have been released. You can pull that down, and uh, that's a tool that's published by Microsoft. And again, just go to the go to MSDN and search for the uh, CRM SDK, and it's in the most recent versions. It's a really nice utility too. All right, um, that appears to be the last question right now. Um, thanks mm -hmm. everyone for the feedback and for the questions. Tangi, thanks so much for for joining us at the last minute here. Really appreciate it. I can I can hear your intern in the background, Tangi. <laughs> Already, <laughs> I can hear I can hear your assistant programmer behind you there. Oh, maybe my son in the in his back. Yes, I think so. Very good. All right. All right. So today's well, session terrific. was recorded. Um, well, I guess we can start wrapping up here. Um, Scott, uh, thanks so much for joining and for presenting to us. Very good. All right. Well, with that, we will uh, end the session. Thanks, and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Um,